M over K. You're forgetting to square the pi! Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, okay. So, You're the stupid one. <laughs> hey, no, gravitational. Like gravitational mass. Is inertial mass, are you kidding me? It's from oh, the NG, dude! There's a G in the equation. All right, now fine. Did you oh, lie fine. to me? Okay, okay, very good. That was just testing you. Our topic is inertial mass versus gravitational mass. Earth, the gravitational and inertial mass are practically the same thing, but they diverge if the force gets bigger and bigger. Well, I hey, thought, what do you mean I, by it? I, I thought I thought it never diverses because in our universe, the gravitational mass and inertial mass are always going to be the same, without any exception. And the scientists have been trying to figure out ever since Isaac Newton why this is the case. Why? And they still haven't um, got the answer yet. How many equations I wrote? Um, six. But how many of them are an example of inertial mass? Okay, I'm going to give it three, so two, I, five, and six. Isaac said three. And Ref? Well, um, I have to see the equations. Yeah, I think it's also three. Inertial. What type of is mm -hmm. this one? That's just the first one rearranged. Good. What type of mass is this one? That's the also gravitational. gravitational. What type of mass is this one? That's inertial, inertial. and the other one. What type inertial. of mass is this one? Inertial. That's also inertial. You're right, just taking so it. In. What is the key to find out? If there's a G. Big G or small. Yeah, it doesn't system. mention the gravitational force in any way. That's if right. it is, then it's specifically gravitational. What if not, this? then it's inertial, which is oh. much more general. What about this one? Number seven, f is equal to mv squared over r. Inertial. I'm going to say that's inertial. Well, it's inertial. We understand that in our universe, there is no differences between the gravitational mass and inertial mass. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. So, the inertial mass is, you know, the object has to move because of inertia, right? Mm -hmm. So, inertial mass is object resistance, right? Object resist when you apply force, right? Yeah. Object say no, I'm not gonna accelerate. But since you apply force, it has to accelerate. So acceleration is F equal m F over m Newton's second law. Mm -hmm. And gravitational mass, as you said, the force due to gravity acting on a mass on this mm -hmm. earth is nine point eight because it's not too big, it's not too small. On the moon is one point six. Because compared to Earth, Moon is small. What is this? Spring. That's a spring. The spring has what? Uh, spring uh, constant. A spring constant or a stiffness constant. Good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say this is fifty centimeter. In length. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say due to m. This is 90 centimeters. Mm. I'm going to also, so nice, I'm going to give you the K. K is, you call this one equilibrium, is that right? Yes. Yes. Because the force from the, uh, the restoring force of the spring is equivalent to the gravitational force of the mass. Great job, Sherlock. What is good? What is the... Actually, you're right. What is That's the equation, obvious. What is the equation for restoring force? Good question. F equals KX. F Good equals job, Sherlock. Sherlock. Good job, buddy. And, Good job. And what is the... Hey, 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 hey. Hey, that's wrong. That's wrong. He got it wrong. It's minus KX. Sure. And I said is... minus KX. Oh, so you got it wrong. And the presenter is... got it wrong. What? And what is the equation to find the force acting on the mass? Mg. F equals Mg. I'm not going to go after you for that. At one. what location kx is equal to mg? Well, that location, 90 at centimeters. Equilibrium. Okay, at equilibrium, fx is equal to? mg. Uh, I'm sorry. fx? fx is equal to? mg. Ready, set, go. You're going to find the inertial what? Mass. S and gravitational? Mass. mass. Go. Oh, wait, no. This should be kx. He was right, all along. Yeah, that's 0.25. Okay. Alright, uh, 0.25 what? Uh, kilograms. kilograms. 
All right, very good. So is this inertial mass or a gravitational mass? Gravitational. No, gravitational mass. Is inertial mass. Are you kidding me? It's from oh, the NG, dude. There's a G in the equation. All right, now find... Did you oh, lie oh, to yeah. me? Okay, okay, very good. That was just testing you. Give you the T. Yeah, then what was T? T, T is 1.27. Okay. That's the period of the spring, period of oscillation. That's right, that's right. Okay. Huh, okay, uh, why am I getting... I'm getting something completely different. Let me... Let me I'm see. getting something completely different. Okay, so what is... Oh, it? I'm stupid! I'm stupid! Oh, no! Good, good. No! Isaac is tilted! Good. Isaac is tilted! Okay, good. 1.27 squared times 6.125 Okay, divided by. I'm the master. Wait, why am I? I keep getting forty-seven. I don't know. Because you forgot to use pi squared, and also you're multiplying instead of including it in the denominator. Oh, pi squared. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I am messed up, messed up. I'm over k. You're forgetting to square the pi. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so you're the stupid one. <laughs> hey, point twenty five. Okay. Wow. All right. It took you like three years, dude. Don't get cocky. It's not about the time. It's about the journey. All right. The winner would be whoever can write the wave equation for this oscillation. Pi over one point two seven. Oh yeah, he got me. No, it's not point four. How do you know it's point four? Ampli That's the amplitude. Well, yes. it's amplitude. The, the, this is. This is never amplitude. It's not amplitude. Make sure you don't uh, you don't confuse forty centimeter uh, being as amplitude. Amplitude is how much you pull. How much you pull. In my scenario, what you're doing is letting the spring rest. Then you add the mass onto it and let it go here. So this is what I was assuming, and if the mass stretched it down by 40 centimeters, then it would have oscillated with 40 centimeters. No, sorry, it would be more like this. But is this still cosine, right? Yes. But what you are assuming is a totally different setup, where you take it, you attach the mass, And you let it go to rest instead of letting it oscillate. And then you pull by 10 centimeters or whatever yeah. centimeter and it is. And then, only then do you pull it even further. And you let it go. Which can give you something totally. It should. Okay, okay. All right. Oh, that means I have to add? Wait, I have to add... Point. And you have to find that. You have to find the omega. You have to find oh. the. You have to find the omega. What is omega? Angular frequency. You mean the frequency? Angular frequency. Isn't that just two pi over one point two seven? Uh, angular frequency formula. Use the angular frequency formula. Oh. What is the angular frequency okay, formula? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's 2 pi over 1.27. It's square root of k over m. It's square root of k over m. That's the exact same thing. Okay, oh, what yeah. is it? k is how much? 6.125. m is 0.25. It's square root. And that gives you 5 or something. Or 4.5. The answer is 4.95. There you go. 4.95. Now, write the equation. Go ahead. What? It's 4. Point, what, uh, what did you do? The angular frequency, 2 pi over 1.27, yeah. is basically 5. Um, All right, five. Use five. All right. Two pi divided by one point two seven is yeah four point nine five. All right. Uh, now, can you write the equations? Okay. A, is it sine or cosine? Well, it starts okay. uh, at its peak, so that means that it's not going to be sine. What? Okay. Well, how, how does it start at the peak? Not at its peak, but at the point of minimum velocity. So it starts at the equilibrium, right? No. Nope. Initially, if you don't attach the mass, it's at 50 centimeters, right? 
Yes. Yeah. Start and call it okay. location A. Okay. This is A. All right. And then you add the mass. Okay, so this is without the mass. Isaac, yeah, Isaac, call it location A. And then you add the mass, it goes to 90 centimeters. This is cosine, it starts at the maximum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that starts at the maximum is a sine. No, that's a cosine. What the? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Show us why it is cosine, now sine. ...of minimum velocity, max and maximum displacement. Velocity is minimum. You cannot say that because velocity is minimum at two location. Two location velocity is zero. Yeah, that that doesn't mean neither of them are minimum. Okay, sure. They're still minimums either way. And I didn't say minimum. I said the velocity is zero. And recall that for x equals zero, the absolute value of cosine x is maximal, while its velocity or derivative is equal to zero, while for a sine wave, it's the absolute opposite. A sine wave would be if you started it from the center and gave it initial velocity. But here, you're starting it from the edge and giving it... Very good. So, cosine. Okay, finish. Yeah, cosine. Finish the equation. Okay, a so... cosine. Okay, so y equals a cosine. Um, and we don't know how much it oscillates. Omega t, so 5t. So, okay, kx... Minus 5t. Sum it up. Isaac, this is your selling statement. Go. Well, inertial mass and gravitational mass are practically the same, but gravitational mass is what we call it when it appears in the specific context of the gravitational force. Gravitational mass is very simple. The cause is you have some kind of gravitational field. For example, the Earth creates a field, or Jupiter creates a gravitational field, uh, and you have an object in that gravitational field, it will experience a gravitational mass. Um, that's the response of the object to the field. The big mass always create the field and small mass always experience it. Yeah, it is very similar to electric field. A big charge creates a field, a small charge, a test charge always experiences the force okay. created by the field. Go and inertial mass. And inertial mass is very simple, it's an object's resistance to motion.